the total radius for the three quarter. Have you ever seen a piece of fabric and you knew exactly, exactly what that fabric was meant to be? Or if you don't sew a canvas, a, a yarn, anything that you can turn into something else. Have you? Because that happened to me the other day. So one of my one of my best friends keeps giving me fabric, and no, that is not the reason why she is my best friend, but it might contribute. Um, I really don't know where she keeps digging it up, but I went to visit her the other day, and she had this, which I don't know if the camera can really capture. It's like a burnt orange terracotta -y kind of corduroy, but it's a. Uh, it's definitely polyester. It feels like it, you know, but that's not the point here. She gave me quite a big chunk of it and when I saw it, I immediately thought, that's a pinafore dress. <laughs> I don't know why, I just looked at it and I knew it would look really cute as a pinafore dress. So I'm gonna make one and this is going to be a quick project. Say it with me. It's gonna be a quick project. Okay? <laughs> okay, we can do it. We can do it. It's fine. So I've been thinking about the design of it. So, well, first let's cover the material itself. So I've got 3.5 meters, which I think is enough to make a really swishy long one. I want it to be sort of midi length and I think uh, I have just enough for it and it's going to be a pl uh, plain rectangle front and then crisscross straps to the back and then in it could be worn with like, I think it'll have to be worn with something underneath, but it'll be nice in the summer as well, although I think this might be a little too warm for the summer, more of a mid-season thing. Let's, I'll show you, I'll show you my really poor sketch and some more information I wrote down. Also, please don't ask me about my French. I don't know what it's doing. I don't know how to fix it. Okay. So this is the little mediocre sketch I did for it. It's very plain. It's going to be a rectangle of front with straps that go over the shoulders and crisscross at the back. It's going to have a center back closure just in a little waistband, just so it's easier to attach. It's going to have side pockets uh, of some sort. I haven't quite decided. I think I need to see what, what kind of fabric I have left over. And then I had, I have a full circle down here. I'm, I'm doubting about that and we'll we'll get to it in a second but then the next thing I did was I wasn't sure I had enough fabric so I drew the fabric I have to scale which is this is uh, 350 centimeters by 140 centimeters and then I calculated the waist radius and the length for the skirt that I would like and then I did it to scale <laughs> and I think I have just enough as you can see there'll be like a couple of inches in between and I think that'll be just fine and then I can cut the bodice out of these sections with the straps and pockets and maybe even a hem facing if I have enough but yeah that's the plan but let's let's talk about circle skirts for a second so this dress that I'm wearing now is one I made last year um, and this is a full circle skirt <laughs> see lots of fabric there and I think it's lovely but I actually think it might just be too much for this for these kinds of heavier fabrics. Um, I definitely want some swish to it. So I was thinking maybe trying a three-quarter circle skirt. I've not done one before, but I think it would be like just just ever so slightly less fabric and it might fall a little nicer in that in that fabric. I need to go and figure out how to do one because I don't think I've ever done one. I mean when you have the option to go for extra swish, you go for the swish. So let me go investigate that real quick and then that'll be the first step. The first step was that we have to cut out the skirt because the skirt is cut on the bias and that needs to hang overnight before you can even out the hem. So order of works are figure out how to do a three quarters, three quarter circle skirt, cut it out, hang it, drape the front, sew the front, do the straps, do a waistband, finish off the skirt, attach and wear. That sounds really simple when you put it like that, but you know how I am. Okay, so I've done some research and I have a pattern. So I thought I'd talk you through what it actually is. So the idea is that uh, a circle skirt, this is two halves of a circle skirt, when put together form a full circle. Um, if you were to separate that, 
imagine like a pizza, if you were to separate a quarter of that out, that's a three quarter circle skirt, which means there's less fabric in it. Um, so the calculations are slightly different. You still need to find your waist radius. My waist radius was my waist measurement plus three inches for a seam allowance because I want two side seams and one back closure. So I'm going to add three seams that you technically don't really need, so it's up to you, but it's because I want pockets and a back closure. Um, so uh, that's my waist length. Then to find the radius, I just use an online cal calculator. Um, there's one, if you just Google circle skirt calculator, there's one that has a three-quarter circle skirt in it. You need specifically a three-quarter one. It can't just be any of the other ones. Um, it also explains all the math for it, so if you're interested in learning, <laughs> then go ahead, I'll leave the link in the description box. Then you have to times that, oh I, I also followed like a little uh, online tutorial for this which I'll link down below as well. Then you have to times that by 2 and then by pi, which in this case was just 3.14, and then you have to t uh, times that number by 0 0.75 and I guess this just gives you the the total radius for the 3 quarter And then you have to figure out what of that is a quarter. So then you times that by 0 0.25 and then you get a quarter length. I'm missing something. This is a quarter of the skirt. So I want it to be three quarters this to be a full pattern, right? Yeah, so what, ha what will happen is when I cut it out, I'm going to have to So that it looks like this rather than a full. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense when I'm drawing it out on the skirt, which we're gonna go do now. So let's let's just go. Let's just go. So I've just spent a good 10 minutes on the floor because I was trying to figure out how to cut this skirt. And that is not because the pattern confuses me, it is because my fake polyester corduroy fabric has got the little stripes running that way and I think it would be so much more flattering for the dress to have the center front with this, the stripes running vertically. What happens when you cut a circle skirt out of a striped fabric is that a lot of it will be on sort of a, a curve. You can kind of see it on this skirt which is too far away. Anyway, there is... so for, for the center front to be on the vertical stripe you would have to cut it along the length, uh, uh, the width of the fabric rather than the length, which obviously won't work unless you you can do a short skirt. <laughs> Took me 10 minutes to figure that out. Um, so instead we're gonna pivot. We're gonna pivot because this is my project and I can do whatever I want. So instead I'm going to dig out a trusty skirt pattern that I've used twice before. I have made an Edwardian skirt out of this, which I really like, and I've also used it to make the skirt of my Lizzie Bennet Pemberley dress. Uh, I know it's not very exciting to you to dig something out of the archive, but if you find a pattern you really like, what's wrong with repeating it, you know? It gives me, I think I measured it, and I think it gave me a three and a half to four meter hem, which is still a lot of swoosh. And I think it's a very flattering pattern and it's already drafted, so <laughs> yeah. And I'll be able to have all the stripes running vertically throughout the body almost except for the seams. So I think I'll be fine. I can always try to flare it out a little bit more if I want some extra swoosh. And I definitely have enough fabric for that because actually that's a very much, uh, a very a much more fabric saving way of cutting if you've got if you keep the, the panels narrow, you can usually cut two out of the same width of fabric. So yeah, that's fine. Uh, for the purpose of figuring it out together, I'll just show you what I mean on the floor. So if you're thinking about making your own three-quarter circle skirt, this video is not a waste. Or if you were thinking up until this point. So let's have a quick look. I think what might make it sound really confusing is because this isn't half of your skirt, this is a quarter of your skirt. So if, you, if you're cutting it out on the length because you want a longer skirt rather than the width of the fabric, um, you're going to need to sketch out two of these. So what happens is you would do it like this and then you would just mirror it again 
making sure that all these lines are correct and then you cut it out along there and then when you sew those two together it has less fabric than a full circle skirt and this is so this is this would be half of it so the way I was going to do it was I was going to trace this out and then mirror that making sure that the, this line matches the angle perfectly um, and then I would cut that out and then I would use this one to cut a second one um, and that already would have the two seams at the side uh, but there is no way for me to cut this that means that would have these stripes running vertically at the centre front which I really want so we are going to go dig out a pattern and yeah BRB Okay, so all the pieces are cut out. Um, what I've ended up with is one center front, one center front panel on the fold, two side fronts, two side backs, and one and two backs. I have made some alterations to the pattern. <laughs> I know I said I wouldn't, but we are. I remembered as I was cutting it out that actually the back is built in with a lot of ease, a lot of extra fabric in there to pleat. I don't want that. I want a full, full flat back kind of. So what I did instead was I cut the front and the side front again so that I kept the waist measurement at the top but flared it out more at the bottom. Why not? We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. So the next steps are just to pin up all the seams, sew them and then finish them. Originally I was going to finish everything on this with an overlocker. Yes I do have one, it doesn't come out a lot because I hate myself. But instead I thought that maybe doing flat felt seams by machine could look quite nice. I quite like that, like it's almost aesthetic as long as you keep your sewing even, which I rarely ever do, um, to have that sort of line of top stitching. Decorative top stitching, I know, who am I? We'll try new things, we'll try new things. So I'm going to go do that and there's not really any more danger of um, sort of, what's the word? Of warping. So what I was saying about having to uh, make sure that circle skirts are hung up for a, a overnight. That's because a lot of it is on the bias. This isn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the seams, making sure not to stretch them, and then I'll I'll let it hang a bit anyway because it might warp. But the seams should stabilize it enough. And then, yeah, top stitch. That means I also have to figure out the the pocket situation. Originally, I was going to do some sort of decorative patch pockets, maybe. But now I might do inseam pockets. But I kind of want them to be a little more, more decorative. I'll figure it out. I'll do those last. Um, yeah, so that's a lot of things to do. Let's go do those. Is I going to say something else? No, let's just go so.
has been a second or so since I've last updated it, so I really wanted to show you what it's looking like. So this is what it's like. Uh, the skirt is nearly finished, it just needs the waistband to be finished, some uh, snaps at the back and a cute button, and then the hem. And then the top, I've literally just, I didn't even put it into paper, I just cut it out with the draped form. And I did some darts, one of one is shoddier than the other, but here we are. Um, and then press them, and then I just hem the edges by turning them under twice, and then machining it down into this cute little thing. And then the next step is to sort out the straps at the back, set them into the waistband, cover this exposed bit of waistband so that all the edges are finished, snaps, buttons, and a hem, and it should be done. So I thought I'd talk you through the straps really quickly because I could not remember last time I filmed because for whatever reason my batteries weren't battered, <laughs> they weren't charged. So the straps are literally just, um, I think this is about 18 inches long uh, and it, it's a finished thickness of one and a, one and a quarter inch. Uh, and then it was just sewed together with a very small seam allowance because I cut this out of a scrap because um, I really wanted to, eat, to use all the bits. So. It's just sort of across there, and now what I'm going to do is turn it out, and usually that stuff is like the stuff of nightmares, but I wanted to show you my handy little tool that made it like so easy. <laughs> And the dress is done! So we're going to take a look real quickly, but I did want to... I can't remember the last thing I filmed where I actually spoke, so I just wanted to wrap up what I did. So I added some pockets, because pockets are essential. Um, they're just your basic inseam pockets. Uh, shall we do a little... Shall we do... I think I filmed a little tutorial. Let's... Why not? Go on. There's a little pocket tutorial. Okay, so the first step you'll need to do is to find yourself a pocket pattern that you like. This one is from a 1940s dress that I just really like the shape. That's the edge that will remain open and I have expanded it just to fit my very modern, very big phone. Then you want to pin your pocket piece. Uh, remember you have four and you have four edges of your side seam. You want to pin one to each in place, right sides facing each other. I pin mine about three inches down from the top and I just, I feel like that sits nicely for me. That's the other side of my side seam. And then you want to stitch that with a smaller seam allowance than you would. So my seam allowance is half an inch and I sew that with three eighths. I also understitched it. Then you just want to pin your side seams along and you'll be sewing down from the top, then pivoting at that corner and going into the pocket and then pivoting again there and down to the rest of the side seam. I mark those bits just so my stitching is a little bit more accurate. Then you just put that through the machine and you've got really nice inseam pockets. This is actually pretty easy to do um, and once you've pressed it, it can look pretty seamless. Just yeah, just practice, have a go and henceforth add pockets to everything. After that, I think I added on a waistband and I to close, I just did a little uh, back seam placket. I have a whole tutorial about them, I'll link it down below in case you're interested. They're very easy closures and I just added a button with the buttonhole and some snaps to mine. I find that's enough, um, you know, you could put it in a zipper, you could do whatever you want really, as long as it closes and stays on. Um, and then I added little buttonholes and buttons to the straps. I picked this over, you can you can just sew them to the waistband, um, but what I thought is this would be easier to get on and off without them getting tangled, because I can just, you know, do them as I go. And also I wanted to, I think I'm gonna add an extra buttonhole case to the straps so that I can wear them without being crossed and at the front so that the dress can be worn in lots of different ways. So I'll be adding that. 
and I didn't I just hemmed it really quickly by leveling the hem and turning it under twice and just sewing it by machine like very quick do a facing you could add lots of stuff here to make the hem a little bit more body um, I also think I have a tutorial on hem facings that might be on patreon if you'd like a tutorial on how to do uh, a skirt hem facing head over to patreon and yeah I think I think that's all the points I had to cover I can't remember I have a really bad memory and I sometimes I forget to film and then I forget what I've done so let's just look at it let's just see it here it is let's reveal And that's it! I hope you'll enjoy this more casual, let's do a quick project, fabric from my stash, which is something I really want to really wanna do more because I have a lot and I have a lot of projects that I just keep pushing aside on whims. So good times and I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, I will be putting the pattern for the top at least. I, I'm not sure I can put the pattern for the skirt because it's a commercial pattern, which I did alter but... I don't know, and I also don't really have the facilities to scan anything bigger than A4 or A3 at, at best. So I will be putting the pattern for the top bit of this pinafore dress on my Patreon. If you're interested on that, I'll leave a link down below. All tiers have access to patterns. I only put, I do occasionally put up patterns there that I can scan, um, and they're usually on my size. And you can, this should be pretty straightforward to scale up or down. So if you're interested in making a cute little dress like this, please check it out. Uh, you guys know I'm a student, so your support over there really means a lot and it does mean I can keep making videos and keep sewing, so I'm really, really grateful. And I will come back soon with more sewing projects and more historical things and I can't wait to do some more videos. I have some things lined up. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.